Okay, so in the past couple of videos, I've talked about some life updates. I've talked about some just general operations and things like that, but I haven't really done anything that's been like super um, technical in a while. So today I wanted to talk about topology. And so the goal here is to go ahead and talk about the separation axioms. And so in order to do that, I want to talk about some, you know, connected topology things that people talk about often and then talk about what actually is a topology from a set theoretic point of view and then actually get into some of the usually talked about separation axioms and then also some other separation axioms that I don't see people mention on well YouTube or on the internet elsewhere very often. Also, since this video is a little bit longer than I would like it to be, I've gone ahead and split up the video into these sections that are based primarily on when I talk about certain definitions or certain things. And those are linked in the description below as well. So if you wanna just click over to a certain separation axiom or a certain example, um, you can do that too. So, most of the time when people think about topology or when they're first introduced to topology, they might see something like this, where you've got a mug and then you, well, um, I have a donut. So yeah, mug to donut thing. Also, if you're not super sure how that works, there is this nice little animation that is on the Wikipedia page for a torus. So one of the reasons that we're talking about this right out the gate is that one of the ways you can formalize this idea of a torus is through looking at some mathematically rigorous way of defining some connection in a space. And so the reason I bring this up is because we're gonna take a different approach to start talking about topology. Instead of thinking about connecting things in a certain way or how connectivity plays in a space, we're gonna look at how things, and by things I mean points and sets, can be separated within a topological space. So, the usual separation axioms, the things that I see talked about everywhere here on YouTube and elsewhere, are these five axioms. It's okay if you don't understand what those things are right now, we'll get to defining them throughout this video. Um, but the one thing to say here is that there's a lot of terminology that comes into thinking about topology in this way. Um, and so it's going to be a little bit term heavy and it can be really intimidating. And so that's why for most of this video, my focus is gonna be on some more accessible examples and those intuitive pictures for each different type of space. In this list, we've only listed out T axioms, but there are other R axioms that correspond to using a little bit less than what is specified in each of the T cases. But before we can talk about those, we should probably start off with the most basic thing you should start asking when you start learning anything about topology. What is a topology? A topological space is a set of points together with a set of subsets of those points. And that set of subsets of points is called a topology. That topology has to satisfy the three topological axioms, which the first one is that the empty set and the whole set of points are in the topology. The second is that for arbitrary collections of sets in the topology, we can take the union over that arbitrary collection and get another set in the topology. And lastly, for finite collections of sets in the topology, we can intersect that finite collection and get a resultant set that is in the topology. We also say that if A is in the topology, then A is an open set. And then if we have a point that is in some subset of our space, we say that that subset is a neighborhood of X. And when that neighborhood is in the topology, we say that that neighborhood is an open neighborhood of the point. Now, there's generally two ways that you can go about getting at topologies when you're starting out with topology. The first way is just to list out all of the sets in your topology and leave no room for 
any generation of new sets. The second way is that instead of listing out everything, we can establish what is called a basis for the topology. And then we can use the three topological axioms to generate the rest of the topology. All right, so now that we have just a basic framework for what a topology is and what that looks like from a more set theoretic point of view, we can go ahead and start talking about the different separation axioms. So the basic idea for separation axioms is that there are additional conditions that we're going to add to the requirements of our topology. And usually these are going to be things that either distinguish or split points apart from each other spatially, not algebraically. In both one and two, we have that A, B, and C are all distinct points. They're not equal to each other. They don't occupy the same space. But one and two have differences topologically. So in the case of the first topology, we're not going to be able to choose a neighborhood of, let's say, A that does not contain C. And the same can be said about any pair of points in the space. Whereas in the second topology, no matter what which pair of points that we choose, we can always find one point in that pair that has a neighborhood that is not a neighborhood of the other one. So when you take A and B, A has a neighborhood that's not a neighborhood of B. When you take B and C, B has a neighborhood that's not a neighborhood of C. And when you take A and C, a has a neighborhood that's not a neighborhood of C. When pairs of points operate in this way, we say that they are topologically distinguished points in the topological space. And when all points in the space satisfy this condition, we say that the space is a Kolmogorov space or a T0 space. So in the split version of this or the separated version of this, we're gonna again take two different examples. Now in this setting, when we're looking at C in particular, in our third example, we can't choose a neighborhood of C that doesn't contain A and B. But then in our fourth example, we can choose a neighborhood of C that excludes A and B. And this is the notion of separation of points. So given a topological space, two points are separated if each has a neighborhood that is not a neighborhood of the other. And so if we have topologically distinguishable points satisfying this property that topologically distinguished points are separated in this way, we say that we have a R0 or symmetric space. The thing to note here is that because not all points have to be topologically distinguishable, we can have things like our fourth example where A and B are not equal to each other, but they are also not topologically distinguishable from one another. Okay, so with these ideas of separated and topologically distinguishable, we can go ahead and start talking about those five usually talked about separation axioms that I see everywhere. So they are T0, T1, T2, T3, and T4. Um, T0 is a Komogorov space. We've already sort of talked about these a little bit just a few minutes ago. They are spaces where they're topologically distinguishable everywhere, which just means that pairs of points in a Kamal Goldorf space are always topologically distinguishable from one another. In this example that I've drawn here, you can see that each point is topologically distinguishable from the next, and you just have to keep in mind that there is an intersection here that is in the topology that isn't explicitly drawn, so just keep that in mind. The next separation axiom that you can add on to the topological axioms is T1, which is an accessible space or a Frechet topology. What that boils down to is that this is a space that is both topologically distinguishable everywhere, so all points are topologically distinguishable from each other, or it's a Kamal-Gorov space, but it's also a symmetric space where points that are topologically distinguished from one another are separated. So in this intuitive picture, the important thing to note here and what makes this a weaker separation axiom is that even though points can't share neighborhoods with each other, those neighborhoods can overlap elsewhere within the topology. The example I'm gonna give here for one such space that you can construct here is what's called the cofinite topology. So this is a topology that can be built on most spaces, but we're gonna do it on the natural numbers and we're going to build our topology by generating the topology from a basis of sets 
whose complements are finite. So for example, just to show how this sort of fits into this mold of sets that can overlap, but also have separation between points, we're gonna look at two sets. Um, the set that does not contain two and the set that does not contain three, or at least I think that's what I wrote on the board. So um, I'm gonna stick with that and I'm gonna talk about it like that, but the board should also have a similar example. So in the case of the set that does not contain two, that's actually a neighborhood of three because three is in that set. And it's not a neighborhood of two because two is excluded from that set. Similarly, the set that does not include three is not a neighborhood of three, but it is a neighborhood of two because two is in the set. So those two neighborhoods, they overlap elsewhere, like one is in both of those neighborhoods, but those neighborhoods also separate two and three from each other in the topology. We can use sets within the cofinite topology to do this with any pair of numbers in the natural numbers, which speaks to why this is also a Kamolgorov space. So T2 is the next separation axiom. It corresponds to Hausdorff spaces or separated spaces, which is confusing because now we're getting into different notions of separated and different contexts of which that term is defined. So in a Hausdorff space, points are separated by neighborhoods and not just separated plainly. And so what that means is that the neighborhoods that separate the points can't overlap, which makes it different from the T1 axiom. And the thing to note here is that a Hausdorff space is actually the combination of two different properties. The first property is pre-regularity, which has this upgraded notion of splitness or separatedness of separated by neighborhoods, where topologically distinguishable points are separated by neighborhoods. So we could have something where we have like a few points that are topologically distinguishable from a few other points, but they're separated by neighborhoods, which means that those neighborhoods that contain all of them are disjoint and don't intersect anywhere. So it's a combination of that trait along with being a Kolmogorov space where all points are topologically distinguishable from one another. So to get an example of a Hausdorff space that is strictly a Hausdorff space, so just T2 does not have any of the other properties that we're gonna talk about in this video, it's not something that I can do in a timely fashion within this video because I'd have to talk about a lot of other things like ordinals for, uh, or infinite ordinals for instance. So with that in mind, as we move forward through the next few examples, I won't be giving any more than the intuitive example because the actual examples that are strictly within these buckets are a little bit harder to explain and deal with. So the next separation axiom is T3, which is a regular Hausdorff space. So in these spaces, points that are exterior from closed sets and those corresponding closed sets are separated by neighborhoods and these are also Komogorov spaces. This is another instance of we're adding the Komogorov property to this type of separation axiom. And the thing that we're adding is the regular part and regularity is the R axiom. And so lastly, to fill out those first five separation axioms that we're gonna talk about, uh, we're gonna talk about the T4 axiom, which is a normal Hausdorff space, which means it's a space where disjoint closed subsets are separated by neighborhoods. And it's also an accessible space. And so now that we've got those out of the way, we can start talking about some other different types of separation axioms that I don't see people talking about as much, but you might find interesting anyway. So let's go ahead and jump in with T sub two and a half or T sub E, which is a Urison space. And depending on what you're reading or what source you're using, this can also be a completely Hausdorff space. Yersin spaces will be spaces where points are separated by closed neighborhoods. So in this intuitive drawing, we're gonna have points in our space and they're gonna be separated by open sets that have been joined with their limit points. And those open sets that have been joined with their limit points are going to be disjoint from each other. So the next one we're gonna talk about is a completely T2 space or a completely Hausdorff space, or in some cases, a Urison space. There's a lot of different ways this could have happened. It's still unfortunate either way and I don't like it, but there are two different types of axioms, but they can have interchange names. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna keep them to TE 
and completely T2 as two separate things. So in these completely T2 spaces, points are separated by a function, and usually that function is continuous. So given a topological space, there exists some function between the space and the real numbers such that for two points in the space, A will be mapped to zero and B will be mapped to one. So this one's a little bit weirder than what we've talked about so far, but the main idea here is that we can use some tool to split points away from each other, even though they might not appear to be split in the space itself. And that's the intuitive idea you should get from this. We can actually find an example of a space that is both TE and completely T2 by taking the real numbers with the usual notion of Euclidean distance and using that to generate a topology along with the sets that are co-countable in the real numbers. So sets whose complements are countable. And if you go ahead and combine those topologies in such a way that we're still holding to the three core topological axioms, we actually end up with a topology that is both TE and completely T2. All right, so two more, almost there. Uh, the next one we're gonna talk about is T5, which is a completely normal Hausdorff space or completely T4. So completely normal means that separated sets are separated by neighborhoods. And then the Hausdorff part of that just adds in the accessible condition or the T1 condition to this. So for two sets A and B to be separated, A and its limit points intersected with B and its limit points would need to be the empty set. So the intuitive picture here is that you have two sets A and B that are conjoined with their limit points. And then further, we have disjoint neighborhoods around those sets that are separate and do not overlap. And so then the last separation axiom that I want to talk about in this video is the T6 axiom, which is a perfectly normal Hausdorff space or perfectly T4. So perfectly normal corresponds to two disjoint closed sets are precisely separated by a function, which is yet another notion of separation that we haven't talked about yet. When you have precise separation by a function, instead of our tool sending points or sets to zero or one, we're gonna have the inverse map of zero or one splitting out into the sets that we're interested in. So even though this precisely separated notion is by far the weirdest one that we've talked about in the context of this video, in the context of wider point set topology, this is not terrible. There are several other mathematical objects and mathematical devices that are defined with similar tools and use this notion of the inverse image of a function gives a certain property to define them. So that aside, the other thing to note is that a perfectly normal Hausdorff space also requires the accessibility condition. Even though we've added a ton to this space in order to get this perfectly normal Hausdorff condition, it's probably the most accessible separation axiom that you can think about um, because it lines up with our natural idea of the real numbers with the Euclidean metric inducing the topology and all that fun stuff. Um, it's not immediately clear why the real numbers fit into this condition. It's not immediately clear how you would prove it, but I'm not gonna get into that because we've already been over a ton and um, this video is getting long. So that is essentially all I wanted to talk about today. I know there is a lot of terminology here. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, you can give it a thumbs up and you can subscribe for more mathematics stuff like this and quite honestly if you made it this far you might as well right this is something that i have always had an issue with and decided to make a video on it because it just helps me think about these things a little bit better so yeah um i'm gonna go now i am nathan this is chalk and i will see you next time